Okay. And there we go. Can everybody hear? Uh, I think we're about ready to start. Um, first, I don't know how to hold this one. By way of introductions, my name is Eric Chase. Um, I uh, I live in the North Park neighborhood, just west of the hospital. I'm the vice chair for the neighborhood for executive committee, I think that's called. I'll be uh, conducting the meeting today. Um, I want to mention a little bit about why I'm, I'm up here. Um, so as you probably know, we have city council elections this year and the filing period was last week. So we have a bunch of people uh, running for city council. Um, the, the current city council has a rule that if you are a candidate for another office, you have to take a leave of absence uh, from your position on the neighborhood board. Uh, one of the people who led to that was our, uh, our chair, Beth Hedegren, who is running for one of the seats. Uh, we have a few other, one other uh, candidate for city council here. Uh, one of the things that's kind of tricky is our neighborhood executive board does not line up exactly with um, the city council districts. So uh, district one here, uh, I think Mr. Mr. Jensen, is that right? Just running for yeah. is uh, it includes part of our district, uh, the Pleasant View and University neighborhoods, and part of the Carterville neighborhood of that district. Um, our the city council district four, which includes a big chunk of our neighborhood, uh, the Grand View and the Upper Carterville and North part of North Park, and that, that also includes the Dixon neighborhood, which is not in this. Uh, neighborhood district, the city council district, and then uh, part of our neighborhood district is also in council district five, which is more of the downtown council district, and that is not up uh, for election this year. But statewide, one of the citywide council seats is up for election. I know it's confusing, but there's you have some big maps in the back, or you can look them up online if you're virtual and figure out which district you're in and figure out uh, the candidates that are running in your area. Uh, so that's that's the reason why I'm up here and not uh, our, our chair who has had uh, to take a leave of access. Um, we've got a few things on the agenda for tonight. Um, and I think we're just, we're gonna have a, a public comment period Later, anybody would like to speak uh, on something not on the agenda. But the first thing we're going to talk about um, is a, some information from uh, Rachel Green on um, the city staff about the plans for the Temple Drive and the Temple View Drive when they uh, building the new uh, Provo. Okay, thank you very much. Hopefully, you can hear me okay. We um, asked, as you know, Public Works at this time is not able to come to our meetings. They're still inundated with uh, the Provo River, which keeps rising with all this rain, and they're keeping an eye on that. But I did reach out to them, and I asked them your questions about the streets that surround the Provo Temple. And so one of the questions was, are there plans to redesign Temple Drive and Temple View Drive as part of the Temple Reconstruction Project, such as creating a center planted median to produce traffic calming, retain the bike lanes, and make the area more pedestrian friendly? And so uh, from, and this is from city engineer Gordon Haight. He said that the city recognizes that the street widths of both Temple Drive and Temple View Drive have more asphalt width than is required for traffic. They think a uh, landscape island would be a good way to reduce the street width. Um, however, the plans for the replacement of the Provo Temple do not include changes to Temple Drive or Temple View Drive. 
And in their discussion with the design team for the temple, they have made suggestions of including a portion of the road as part of a project to narrow the road. Um, they seem to be leaning towards planted bowl valves along the street and creating on-street parallel parking. This would have the effect of narrowing the street section and adding some vegetation. And so um, in our next item, we will have people um, from the, the architects of the Provo Temple talking to us about that. Another question was, is there a street plan that the public can access that shows future projects? So the Provo City Transportation Master Plan lists the future major street projects that's on the city website. There's also a link here on this document. And again, this document can be found on the neighborhood district program website. Enough, so going with that, how much sway does a developer have in changing public streets in Provo? Because of course developers mostly do the private area and public works is in charge of the streets. And the answer was developers are required to meet the minimum street standard. If a developer wanted to change a public street standard, they would need to get city council approval. So as the architects and project managers are discussing the temple, please keep that in mind. They don't have a lot of control over the public streets. That's something that you would want to talk to your city council representatives about. And another one was, oh, how will the developer asking for North Temple Drive to be made private affect the surrounding area? That's that little street that's kind of just below the temple. And, and this is interesting. The city did a traffic study and found that in the peak hour, there were only 10 vehicles that used Temple Hill Drive as a through road. So there should not be any noticeable traffic difference in the adjacent streets if that um, street becomes part of their project and doesn't exist anymore. And then these are kind of more general questions. What's the process for a neighborhood district to request changes to streets? I know that's always an issue that comes up in every meeting. And According to Gordon Hay, to make changes to streets, the neighborhood district would need to get the changes included in the city transportation master plan. The city council has the authority to amend and update the transportation master plan, which is usually updated every five years. So again, that's something you're going to want to talk to your city council representatives. And then what's the best way to let the city know of a community's need for narrow, narrower streets, center medians, and more trees? Again, city council is the body that approves the transportation master plan and all the city street standards. Neighborhood districts can let their district council member know of their needs. And kind of what um, Eric was talking about. So neighborhood district four, that in the purple is what I added is comprised of Council Districts 1. So right now, Bill Billmore is your counselor, and that is up for election. He is not running for re-election, so make sure to pay attention to that because District 1 does affect your area. We have um, Council District 4, which is Travis Hoban. He is also running again, and he's running on a post. And then, and then District 5, which is currently Rachel Whipple, that is not up for election. And then your citywide counselors are Patrice McKay, and her position is not up for election, but David Shipley, who is the other citywide counselor, his position is up for election. And so just kind of pay attention to that. Just know that anything with streets, you're, you're looking towards your city council. We don't have anybody from the engineering department who gave us these answers here tonight, but if you do have other questions, we can take them down and and uh, Rachel can get answers from them and, and see those in email to send out to everybody. Um, I want to add there too, it's the transportation master plan is under the city council, but the the mayor and the administrative side of the city does have a lot of leading way in how they interpret that. So if you do have a plan or you do want changes to your street, it doesn't hurt also include like the mayor on, on your contacts. Um, does anybody have any any questions about that? We can we can send back. 
get into this too next time. On the previous slide, it said, oh, on the previous slide, it said that the um, master plan is every five years. And where are we? I mean, was it just last year or is it coming up next year? When is that? Uh, that's a good question. I think, oh, oh Aaron's table. What was it? 2020, thank you. Well, I think that's the end of the first item on our agenda then for tonight. Um, we are, I think we're going to be pretty uh, ahead on time tonight. Uh, so we'll move on to item number two. Um, it was the project plan approval for a complete replacement of the existing building and construction of the surrounding site in the public facility zone located at uh, 2200 North Temple Hill Drive, the university neighborhood. Uh, that's the uh, Provo Temple. And I, we have a presentation from uh, some people involved with that. I believe it's Chris Robbins, who's the project manager for uh, the Georgia Express Latter day Saints on this project. Uh, first of all, I'd like to tell you how much we appreciate the opportunity to come here and present. It's a little different. Uh, oh, the mic. Oh. No, is that? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's a, we're just very appreciative. We thought we'd take this opportunity to come and discuss this with you in person instead of just looking at these, these uh, uh, comments by the city. The drawings are, major drawings are in for review. The site plan is lagging behind it. And so today we, we just want to give everybody an opportunity to see the, see what, what we're asking the, the city planners and the, and the public works department to, to look at and approve. Uh, and we've heard some of the things that have already been mentioned in the comments about what, what we're going to do. You're going to see that. I want to turn the time over to the, to the, the architect uh, to, to review the details. But we're very appreciative that the, the, the district, I'm, I'm learning that just, just today how uh, it was organized. So, you know, I'm, I go all over the place. So I'm renovating and building things in other places. And just finish St. George. It's marvelous. <laughs> you got to go. Uh, it's a, uh, the, uh, so but today what we want to really get, get focused on is get the, the site plan in front of you and, and, and see what we're, what we're thinking around around the temple uh, received from city staff and from a local citizen, of course, the city staff has this plan. And uh, so this is an opportunity for you to see it. Um, um, and uh, review the requirements associated with the vacation of the road, and you'll see how that plays into the new site plan. Uh, and that's why that's on the agenda as a separate item as, as compared to the streets around the temple. And, and I just drove around again today. Yeah, those streets are like arterial size. So they're huge. I mean, like if I were a bike ride, I'd feel really comfortable and like 15 feet to myself. So, um, and we also want to just let you know that we want to begin the process here shortly when, when we when we finally get an announcement, a uh, final announcement on, on trouble, which I'll discuss in, after the after the architect's presentation, because that's really more important to us because site plans on our critical path to get our design done. But uh, we want to start the process of interfacing with the immediate, at least the immediate citizens around the temple, if not the, the more extended community out. And now that I've got some pictures to know what that out means uh, of the districts about as the construction it begins, whenever that is, and uh, and what and during that process, how and what they might, everybody might expect what goes on around the temple because of the site so big, it's, there's an opportunity there for almost to be minimal. But there may be some times during construction where they need to make a floor that starts early and goes late. I don't know how many of those are yet, but uh, and, and other things. Uh, and we want to make sure that the community has as input so the construction project manager, construction contractor, can uh, keep them informed. Um, uh, on a regular basis and you know, there's surprises about what's happening. 
So having said that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Vince Alcott. He's with NHTN, the architect for, for us uh, on the tempo. He's going to go over and, and, and just review the couple of slides. Mostly, mostly the, the, the new site plan and kind of point out some things and, and how we would probably, like I said, I'll be keen myself address some of the issues that you have about traffic home and, uh, and then we'll take it from there. Yeah, and just make sure to hold that. People on Zoom are having a hard time. Hold it right up. So, so basically what this image is showing is uh, a Google image of the Google site with a boundary that basically shows the extent of the project, you know, proper. And uh, you can see this uh, this project flanks Temple View Drive to the south and 22, uh, or 2220 north to the north. And it also crosses Temple Hill Drive, that kind of elevated, bisects the site, and includes the, uh, the west parking area that's uh, uh, I don't know how it's used and so maybe a better idea, but it's it's uh, partially used, I think, for the My patrons that go to the Temple Lake. Sorry. <laughs> um yeah, if we go to the next slide. One. Again, this is the released image uh from the first pregnancy, uh, I guess a couple of years ago of what the, the new temple would look like. And, and it basically follows uh Similar contemporary uh, temple, domestic temples that have been built. Um, it's uh, it's footprint, by the way. You see this in the in a future slide here in a second. Um, is more or less the same size of the existing temple. So we can kind of feel how big the base is. It's kind of as big as the, the current temple space. And I think the next slide is the site concept. Like I said, this is a team. Team effort, and we'll have Vince Alcott, our landscape architect, talk about some of the, of the design of the site and how things are are placed and oriented on the site. All right, now we get down to the really fun stuff. So, um, and there will be another slide here in a minute that will show you some of the things that we've done. So, what we're talking about now is we're talking about going to make sure you find Temple Hill, Temple Hill Drive. Um, we're looking at for a vacation of that road um, with drive entrances into the temple parking lot from either side of it on the north and the south. Um, this drive entrance right there stays approximately where it was at. And then we're looking at adding on the north, I think that's 2320, I think if I read that right, two drive entrances that line up basically with the streets across them. What this does is it lets us, A, we get more parking around the temple, so it's closer, and our slopes are not as steep as they are on the site right now. I and mean, we can also get more parking on the site. So that's basically what we've done. We have included on the, on the roadways of uh, 2320 and then Temple View Drive, make sure I got that right, um, there's angled parking there, which again, it lets us increase the number of parking stalls that we can get. Would you point out where the temple is now? <laughs> um, if we go to the next slide, good segue. So there you can see where the original temple was, the big white spot in the middle there. So we moved it a little bit down down the hill and to the to the west, and that lets us get the parking up back into the hillside there. Yeah, and let's just get that parking all the way up there. One thing about the rendering that is not in this plan is the fountain, just so that everybody is aware there's no fountain. Will there be? Not at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. We can't hear the comments. <laughs> they asked if there would be a, a fountain in the, in the future. Not at the moment. Just like, um, I think any other questions or should we go to the next slide? Uh, the next slide well, you, could, you, could toggle, you could toggle back and okay. just toggle back to the other one, I think. Okay. Oh, that's right. Oops. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 
Go back to the other one or go back to the nice pretty colored tree one. Okay. <laughs> See, so the purpose of the bunk house allows the annual parking and that and that caused the bank right over the year. So what could be saying is that these old outs here it allows us to park the angular parking in there and it lets the is it protects the angle parking. Yeah, so it, I mean, this is a common practice to get angle parking on our community streets. Uh, I live in Daybreak in, in South Jordan, and there's it, all the streets have all those. <clears throat> They're narrow streets, so yeah, we're going to compare that part. Uh, but it does create a calming effect uh, it, because it narrows up. Uh, it'd be nice if it were big both sides, but that's something that has to be discussed otherwise. But this allows the cars that are parked on, on an angle to be protected from the traffic. You can move the, move the, the, the lines with the, in this case, as I drove up there yesterday, either this morning, you would move the bike lane in a little bit, shift all the lines over a little bit. And then, and that would keep the, and that, that creates the, the safety zone for the cars that are parked. It allows more on there, gets you some uh, more traffic calming in this work. And, uh, and that's, that, I think that's a, a cool design because I, that's how it's working where, where I live. And they're not the speeds or the widths of these roads. So. Um, Your mic is on. Now my yeah, you have to, when you're switching between the two mics, okay. just tap the top so it knows to turn that one on. There you there go. We go. We're back now. Um, just in terms of accessibility, um, we do now have really good accessibility from the streets, basically on both sides that comes in here. We also have sidewalks that you can't see that are underneath that bring you into the center portion. And then from the MTC, we've simplified some things uh, to make sure that the missionaries that are coming up the hill, instead of just wandering through the parking lot, or we're rerouting them and bringing them up that center spine there. And there's more trails. And we do have some trails. So up at the very top, uh, when it's not necessarily winter conditions and the gates are open, there will be direct access back down through there. Um, and then it goes around this elliptical shape there. And then it comes back and they can go in the front door. So there's a little bit more direct access from that northeast corner there. What is that shape? What is actually what is that shape is? That? It's just planting. It just comes out as a gray color at this point. It, we're, we're, it, it will be shrubs and low growing flowers and <laughs> You may have noticed in the earlier questions um, the suggestion that there that that road be pedestrian friendly and bike lanes and that sort of thing and the diagonal parking that you're talking about seems like that would preclude um, pedestrian walking and bike lanes and that sort of thing. The sidewalk along here is. Seven and a half eight feet wide for pedestrians. So we're it's just as wide and it's similar to what's there now. So it's a very wide sidewalk for pedestrians. Biking may be another issue that we might have to look into. Uh, what kind of consideration have you considered for drop off? Okay, so drop off, we have drop offs coming from both sides. We have a drop off that's right here that's flush with the curb, and we have a drop off on the other side of that plaza. And it's quite a bit of drop off lane. My question. Okay. Um, so right now there's bike lanes on both of those streets. And um, on the, the south road. Yeah, so your your bike lane. Is going to be behind the angle parking, correct? Well, it, the, the way the, what, was, what, what was a possibility is is that because this is out like this, your bike lane is probably probably about right there. Yeah. Uh, so um, it, it, that shifts a little bit because the road's so wide. You just need to restripe the road, and, yeah. and you'd have you have bike lanes here, plus you have a well, like behind that angle parking. Yeah. That 
is something that I think we should give some <clears throat> give, give you pause because uh, you're going to have bikes coming down that street very fast because it's a decline. You're going to have uh, uh, par uh, cars backing into that bike lane. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is not a good scenario. It's dangerous. And then, and then also, um, what picking up off Lynn's question, we've got why now? Uh, the married student housing just across the street. What thought? And you've got the whole area surrounded by people who would like to, to walk to the temple. What steps is the uh, team taking to work with the city to make uh, crosswalks uh, across these streets Which more mean? pedestrian friendly? We, we, we just late last fall in this area, we had a sister who lived up there serving in the temple, walked to, trying to walk to the temple, and she was hit and severely injured. Um, that it's not safe in that general area for pedestrians because streets are so wide, the signaling doesn't really take into account people walking, people are turning left and right uh, and not really paying attention to pedestrians. So I, I hope that your team will take a very proactive uh, approach to working with the city to address that issue and not just think about, you know, People who are sure. driving this. Sure. I mean, Rachel, just put that down. I mean, it's something that the, the, the team ought to get together with the uh, planning and public works to decide how they want to approach that. Thank you. Kind of along that question, um, people are often walking, myself included, around the temple grounds right now, which crosses that road that will, that will not be there anymore. So, is that whole area going to be fenced now? And now we would be pushed all the way down to 930 East. Is that correct? Yeah, so at the moment we have you know, gates at the front, but it's basically fenced along the whole perimeter of the site. There is no fence running across the lane. Right, so it's so, all of that green area is now fenced? Yes, there's a fence running along the sidewalk, and then everything else inside is open for pedestrians and walking as long as the gates are. This temple stays open a long time. It's good to be a night walker. So. So, so because right now, I mean, people go there all times in the day, and we do loops around the temple. Yeah, so there's some restriction on it, and I did the Jordan River. We did the same thing. I, I mean, they close their their door, their gates at ten thirty, and then they'd be open at six. You know, we'll leave you open on Sunday. That, that would be a, that would be an interesting question. Usually, probably not. Yeah, so, so is there a sidewalk around that fence area, though? That's what I'm trying to ask. Like, can we loop it around without having to go into parking and everything? So once you're inside here, this whole area, with the exception of where the parking cross is there, you can literally walk loops all the way around that without encountering vehicles. Does that help you? So there's sidewalks. Yes, okay. there's there's sidewalks that come all the way up through here. We come around um, all the way up to the top. You can come back down. And Was that what you're asking? I guess so, yeah. Um, another comment, though, along with the biking, I know I'm noticing that there's diagonal parking on each side. Um, if I were coming down the hill, I would opt to go on the north side so that I would not with the parking and then if I was going uphill I would come on the south side so that I was not next to parking. So that a little bit extra driving along 900 east, but I think that, that was doable to help avoid that parking because um then you wouldn't have cars coming in and out. So I think we got the message. We're gonna take a look at that. I've got some ideas already. I used to be a similar <laughs> I just want to make sure we've answered your question about perimeter parking or, or walkway because people now can walk. We understand you can go all the way around. And a lot of us do. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right now, there there is it's maybe somewhere there's a the sidewalk. Wait, wait, wait. The sidewalk along the perimeter doesn't change, but when you get 
the western boundary of the property. There's not a, currently not a sidewalk on that Okay, let's hear that. Um, you do this wrong, but it's like your kids So we have to go down 900 east or start going inside. Yeah. Or right. If the, <laughs> no. if the tunnel grounds are open, there is sidewalks literally from street to street out there that are closed at night. They would be closed late at night and, and non Sunday. Similar comment to that one. On the west hand side, I, I presume you're talking about having a fence. Be a sidewalk on the outside of that, yeah. so you have a complete sidewalk all the way around on, on this side right here. Yeah, yeah, on the west side of those trees, on the outside of the grass, all the way around. Yeah, we do not have a sidewalk all the way on the west side over here. Well, that's what I'm asking. Because that would that would answer there. Yeah, I, I got we got okay. a little bit on those. <laughs> okay. 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 Well, well, we like to take that into consideration. That's good observation. Yeah, Hey, we have a question from Zoom. This is from Richard Yalsey. Assuming no supply chain issues, how long do you anticipate this change taking? How long to replace the temple? Oh, hold that until we get down with it. I don't want to make that comment until the end. Oh, okay. You know why? If, if on Zoom they didn't hear it, he's going to wait to answer that. I'll answer it just again. Could you comment generally on the amount of vegetation? I think it looks very green and beautiful. Can you compare what we have to now to what we have? There are more trees on this site than on this plan than there are on the other. I don't know the exact point over, but you're probably right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, at least. And he would know he's a landscape architect. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small issue, but the size of the trees is obviously only so big on the drawing standpoint. I mean, they're putting in these all new trees. They, they, they will be new trees, but we'll plant large caliper trees. What we're showing here is typically a full growth tree. So they won't be quite as big when we plant them, but we'll plant larger caliper trees to. I'm, I'm not a landscape guy. Okay. You see larger caliper out here, they're larger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, caliper trees is basically the size of the trunk. Yep. Typically, what you'll get is like an inch and a half or a two inch caliper tree bottom. We're planning to plant three or four inch caliper trees. So, they're just taller, wider, and we plant them. How much of the parking spaces for the new plan compare with what we have for the the present temple. Will people have to park regularly on the street? Is my question. We hope not. So, we want to get into parking counts. I think in general, we can just say yeah. there's going to be more. There, there's, there is more parking here than there was on the original plan. So, if you overlay the, the next plan, which shows the two of them, and then, is that more parking without using the street? That is more parking without using the street, and then we add the street parking on to that. And you can see we've added at least one more row. We've rearranged the parking down on the west side, which gives us more parking. Again, we have parking around the top of the temple on the upper side, which just gives us more parking. Be aware that this is a major problem of parking on the streets especially for those who live on the north side of the street. Okay. We had to deal with that. There's signs that we put up and there's people that still park. And that problem is really con uh, a concern that we all should have. They cannot receive their mail. Because the parking is on the other side. So better consider some way of how do we, right now uh, we had to put up signs. Do not park on the north side of the street. People still don't pay attention to that, but they were better. So we, keep that in mind. We think we've added a couple hundred extra parks. So we got that helps. Well, I don't think you have that major of a problem on the uh, south south side. You're, you're but on the north side, it was a major problem. Believe me. Okay. Yeah, that'd be true on both sides. I can see what you're saying. And then, uh, uh, 
th this plaza allows the and right now I went down there and this parking down here is kind of like the way there. And, and and what happens is they're parking up there on the south or the north on the street because it's closer. There are homes there. And uh and, and I, I saw we saw that we we we'll, we'll collaborate with the city with the, the city to see what we can do to there's not much you could probably do because sign has signs not working and it's kind of like that. And then you gotta get the, the police involved or the you know law enforcement and then yeah, make that. Well we'll 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 take a look at that and see if there's anything we can do to uh question what that is. But could could those be the bike lanes though instead of parking on the other side? Could that be the bike lane on both streets? Yeah, we'll take a look at that too. Yeah. <laughs> Because you can't park in the bike lane either. So yeah, it's yeah. kind of a double. We're not allowing, we don't want that, as usual, we don't want that parking on the non opposite side, right? Then, right? That's what we want to limit mean. that. So there's ways to do that. But again, it'll be required if you want to design it. Well, it's not designed here. We'll take a look at that. I appreciate it. You don't understand what I say. We can have parking on the south side of that street, on the north mm -hmm. parking. That's no problem. It's parking on the north side of that street where there are homes. So don't close down parking, in my opinion, on that uh, 2230 North Road. Yeah. Does that make sense? Did you guys sign? Yeah. I think I think we're on the same page. Got it. Angled parking on the south side of the street's okay. It's okay. No parking. That's where the homes that. are. Yeah. Right. Isn't that a city? Regulated issue. What the city? What the city have to say? Have to designate yeah. this curve to be no parking, and they have to put up signs. They don't do red paint. I just found out anymore. They just put up signs, but it seems like that that would be a city decision, mm -hmm. right? In, in in concert with what the neighbors want. I would guess. Uh, the only reason. Only time I be there is that people are families that live on that yeah. side and they have other friends and family that come to visit. They have every right to park on that. So yes, no there's no problem thing. I'm not <laughs> on that side. Yeah. No. I uh, wonder about the plans and projections in the future in regard to the square footage of the raise to the old plan. Uh, uh, renovated over. Mm -hmm. And there's no adjustment over the city. And the new chapel on to read it over. It looks close to the new one. It's very small. That's a big spot. I think the architectural structure of the building is an important statement. Anything else on this site? It's all good feedback. Really appreciate all that you you said. So make that you sit down with the see the plans and 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 tweak a few things. Bike lane got that. It makes sense when I see it fixed, but but it's going to be more serious. So can we make sure we talk loud and in the mic so people yeah, on so Zoom can hear? People online still is correct. It's a, this is a, we don't want to be a good neighbor, but there's also a, there's also a municipality that has a, that has a responsibility. Not that we're going to push it that direction. We don't mind collaborating with them and so forth, but there, we can do some things to make that, to make it how it make, particularly around the edges of, of the property that you see there, on the opposite side of the street. Where we do can't push people to park across the street, but we can also so we can we understand that and so we can we can work on that. If there's nothing further, can we answer the question about how the timing? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, go to the last slide, slide Rachel. Go to the last slide, Rachel. Thank you. So this is just, just to remind this is what we're trying to do. And uh, and it's a it really helps and, and plus the fact that the temple is being moved down the hill it changes the grades it allows us to build this, this this plaza that speaks to the temple so that you're standing there and, and you get to take pictures wedding pictures but it also allows people to actually want to 
gather and go that way into some far reaching park like it looks like it's a yeah, right. so I like that and then that, that and this this requires that to be vacated and so we'll just want to make sure that that's that's integral to this site plan for it to work. Okay. okay, so let me let me unless there's any other questions, I'll I'll go from here. So let me just give you briefly um as you know, we're all supposed to be reminded back in back in October a conference, a general conference of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, President Nelson announced 15 temples. He then also announced the the reconstruction of the of the Pro, of the Provo Temple and the, the rendering that you saw was was released. But he also made a statement that it's tied to the Orem Temple, and that the uh, and that's and and uh, we would. Arduous process, as I mentioned, I'm not trying to be a really cool guy, but worked on a lot of very large temples there for the church in the 12 years I've been there. And uh, St. George took us 12 years to get it to where it's at today. Uh, even, the, even the construction didn't take that long, but it got 12 years. And this one has been just about that long to get to the process of review, evaluation, decide what to do, why we're going to do this, and what's the best thing to do. Both uh, uh, with size and operation, and for and for the patrons. Um, jumping back to the announcement, so we have a set a set way of, of announcing and doing things, uh, and and that re therefore that announcement was critical because it sent the message that we're going to intend to do something to Provo, but it's tied to Orem, and when the Orem announcement comes out, we anticipate there will be more information relative to Provo and its closure. And that's and, and I and working in the special project program don't have the authority to uh, speak to that. <laughs> and it's, it's also tied to that is an answer to the question that was asked at the length. Uh, usually in those announcements, uh, they'll announce not only when it actually physically closes because that's a critical date for everybody, <laughs> uh, but also a timing of when it might open again. Uh, I've seen where they maybe sometimes don't even mention that, but not. But usually they do. And that's about all I can really talk about. As far as the structure itself, uh, I'd like to defer that to our next meeting because we I want to have more once we get the announcement, because that means we have more data that we can make public with because it become public in the announcement. Because we got to work through the construction issues and uh, impacts on the community and so on, so like that. Won't perceive a whole lot because the speech is so wide. Uh, but we still want to be good neighbors about that, like I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, as far as the, the, the structure and, and why it is the way it is, I think I'd like to, if you wouldn't mind, it's not try not to dodge it, but I'd like to be not quite done with the design and everything. We have a rendering because it'll go early on in the process and say, This is how we look at it. And if you've seen anything in any of the other temples that have been announced, they release those and eventually release maybe some of the interiors, the renderings. Well, that's just. That's this, this much of the design, <laughs> and then there's this much of the design, uh, and so uh, that's where we're at. We're trying. This is a critical path for us right now because we need to get this resolved. And I'm trying to put pressure on you. I'm just trying to tell you where we're at, um, so we can get to the point where we can uh, finish the drawings, get the work out, and then we can get ready for whatever date is is, is articulated to us. I know we can know date. Uh, um, that that's the. Uh, uh, Purview of, of our, our leadership. And so I'd like to then to, to refer maybe some more discussion about the, you know, the, the temple structure itself and so on and so forth. And it might answer some of the questions of why. And a little why is the motion. But then on several temples, too, that was a big, that was an issue. And, uh, and um, we're doing our best to, to, to be able to answer that. Um, other than that, is there any other questions you want to ask about it? Approximately, how long does the demolition take? We don't know that yet. We have plans. Three months or 30 years? What do oh, you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not the first and not the second. So close. <laughs> <laughs> then somewhere in there, uh, it's, uh, it, it actually goes pretty quickly to some degree. Uh, we have a paper that needs to be done because um, there's been and just been learning our lesson on St. George the debate, and that was pretty intense. Um, and uh, it actually held work up at times when we had to dodge around. Not so much here, uh, but that'll, that'll go first. 
and then the end of the demolition can start in earnest. Uh, it should be too long. But I think we need, we'll, we'll, we'll make, that'll be, I'm assuming it will be in the meeting of minutes, right, Rachel? <laughs> that question. Uh, so we can uh, we can address that at the next meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, I'm really interested in this. A former president of the Provo Temple, you mentioned we were talking about a lot of things 20 years ago the Provo Temple. It was not, there are things that needed to be changed and done. And there is one person that I hope you're consulting with because there is some interest in learning from old timers. I'm the oldest person in this room, I believe. There's some lessons learned. I bet you're not from Provo. Um, I graduated from BYU. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, you a long time ago. I'm not, I, 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 look. I think we all appreciate it. We have a certain feeling about our area. Mm -hmm. It's a little different than Salt Lake or St. George or whatever. Those are opinions. But I would recommend, if you haven't already, that you talk to a Kurt Jensen. Who is a recorder of the Provo City Center Temple? He is highly regarded. He was the the Provo. He was the Salt Lake Temple recorder. knew the general stories very well. He was our recorder here for several years at the Provo Temple. He has a wealth of knowledge. You know there is some advantage of being old. Lessons learned. Have you ever heard that? Yes. And we, we uh, the elder citizens here in this area, have learned a whole lot about things that have gone on in this area. And this is wonderful, by the way. What we're seeing is a great, huge blessing. What you're doing, we compliment. But I would recommend, please, consult with the Kirk Jensen, recorder of the program. All you have to do is just listen. You might gain a little insight. He knows a whole lot about it. I know a person who is willing to put in several million dollars to the uh, upgrading of the Provo County. He came to me and talked to me about it. I still can go to that person if you're interested. It kind of saves us a few bucks. <laughs> anyway, this is the bottom. So I may be, I said I wouldn't come here to this meeting and say anything. Yeah. Unless someone really objected to it. Yeah. Here I am speaking too much. But there, but there is something about having experience. There is. And, and you know, the one thing that we did, which you folks may have liked or not, but we created them all. And that beautiful setting that was there. That took a little while to get approved. But, you know, I'm not suggesting that's the only thing you need to do now. But uh, Okay. Appreciate that input. Yeah, and was, uh, put my name on record. Whoever's keeping notes, Carl Bacon. And um, as someone who's a little bit younger and not knowing the wealth of knowledge too, which I really value, I think I know we're not at the design stage tonight. Um, there is a lot of people who love the public temple and appreciate the. Um, how unique it is. And I think seeing a temple where when I saw, I thought, oh, I don't know where that is because it looks like uh, uh, it looks like a lot of the other temples. And I think um, that just a temple as unique as our members, which may not necessarily be re represented here tonight, is so important to have. <laughs> that uniqueness in us. Maybe this is a feeble comment, but um, there's something special about tapping into the um, history of what exists now, which I really value as a designer and as someone who appreciates architecture. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you expressed that I have one of the planners. Yeah. I know I know several lots of people who um, yeah. said that. Yeah. yeah. Understood. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good. That's about all I can say. The uh, it will take that note back. 
and this, uh, there's a, there's a, uh, but the, uh, we'll see what happens from here. So why, why I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering why demolish the the current temple? Is that there structural problems with it, or is that the key? Yeah, we're not. I, I, again, it goes back to my original comment that we're not necessarily prepared to discuss it. There's no evidence. But Alice was the trigger. Really, no, that announcement back in 21 is the intention. The Why next the decision to build a whole yeah. new temple rather than. It has, a, it has a very large, there, there are reasons. They're invented, that's what's taken time. You know, from, they're, they're all, all the gamut of things from, from uh, age. To uh, the conditions of the structure, the mechanical equipment. Um, I could refer half an hour on this, all goes down to the thing about eight times. And, uh, and it's always kind of emotional for me because I'm touching that that point at all. You know, and I don't seem like the only thing I'm really unemotional. That's just because I'm illogical. And uh, I have my moments at the uh, um, but I also know that we're led by some by by uh by God and it's this is the Savior's temper. And he we I know that's that's not a carnage but the feelings are as that but there's uh, it's considered very heavily, very rigorously and very detailed, and over and over again that's why it takes so long to come to so many critical decisions. Uh, St. George, we completely took out the annex, but we didn't we didn't bother the historic building, although we did, we did some major renovations and they studied it. So kind of amazing because the way the operation needed to be had to overcome the, the needs of the example behind the place. And some of the other temples are made so and that's uh, We'll, we'll get into more of that. Is. We just want to get a few. We, I knew some of these students were already resident or present, and so uh, and, uh, we'll uh, take those into consideration as best we can. But that's the, uh, no, we love our temple. Really. I know. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. 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 I understood, uh, which has its own set of faithfulness, doesn't it? So, thank you. Thanks so much for for coming out uh, and giving us this presentation. It's a lot of good info. Um, Rachel, did we have to vote on anything for this? You What's you the... you don't. Okay. You don't have to. It's purely if just if you want to. If people like the site plan or I think whatever. We kind of get the general uh, the. The general feeling I'm getting from everybody here is that we most people are okay with the, the site plan. One of the things that I think the city um, has some influence on is the vacated at the road. And I think if we go back and, and say I, we're, we're generally okay with the vacating of the road, as we can work on these other concerns about uh, access. Of, Parking or pedestrian and infrastructure around it. Um, is, is anybody have any objections to kind of passing them along like that to the city and the court? Okay, I think that's that's good. And we'll we'll talk more about. I'm sure the city will talk to about what specifics we might, you know, what kind of improvements we might want to have on that. Right. Okay. And can we give a big thank you for them coming? Yeah. Thanks so much for, for having this. And I'm sure uh, this is just this neighborhood district, but I'm sure lots of people in the other neighborhood districts can view our, our meeting online. And hopefully we asked all the questions back. Um, I wanted to Thank, I, I did mention at the beginning to acknowledge all the other people who are on the, um, the district board, executive board, who are here. I see Bob here, most of them have many tags. Uh, if, you're, if you're on the executive board, do you want to raise your hand so we can 
in that yeah, you guys can find your your people when we're when we're done. Um, if you have any other questions or concerns or anything you want to talk about in some of the in our in our next meetings. Um, okay, I think we're ready to move on to item three on our agenda today. Thank you. Um, that's a report on our matching grant applications. And I think it was good news for us. Uh, I can I can give you the the uh, summary. So in our last meeting, we did talk about using matching grant funds to work on the the project on Carterville, the trail um, from Carterville Road down to behind the Walmart there. Uh, but we did have some issues while working with the city with that. Basically, it's too big of a project for them to get done with. By the, on the schedule they needed to for the to get the money to their accounts this year. So that is going to be pushed off as a potential future project and a way we can uh, you know money in the future. Um it's but I think having that as our priority for that is it was a good idea because it is pushing the city to complete that project. So even if our neighborhood grant money is going to that, I think. It's, it's probably going to get done and there's enough momentum for the city to, to get that done. Um, and our other um, our other project we had as a backup were a few um, sidewalk ramps we identified uh, near Exchange Park that were missing that we thought would be a better, uh, just something small or something we could do to make sure our money was done. I have a big announcement about our North Park neighborhood sidewalks matching grant that has been approved. I have the matching grant agreement here. Eric, if I can have you sign them, we're going to get going, transfer that money to Public Works. They said they will get those sidewalks in by June 30th. Yeah. This is very exciting. Any other district got a project in fiscal year 23 23? District one is about the same time, so right there in the date, right there in the date. So district one, they are also doing it. I'm putting I'm putting their paperwork together, so they should have theirs on Tuesday. You guys were just neck and neck. District one has been working on theirs for a couple of years. You guys have been working on yours for what a month? <laughs> Like so they are doing a sprinkler system on a private park. So that was a little bit difficult. You had to get the agreement of all the property owners. So a little bit, and, and plus they're dealing with a private company. So we had to make sure they were insured and get bids and all that. So a much longer process when you're dealing with private property while well, you're doing the easy way that's for you guys to okay. keep if you want your own copy we have our copy we can get going now but smart to do it with partnering with public works because then you can get it moving super fast so good job so will their private park be open to the public it is open to the public technically it is a private park but they do let anyone in the area use it and that's why that and the neighborhood still had to vote and agree on and all the property owners had to agree on it. Yeah. Well, thanks for everyone who helped with with getting those sidewalks. And I, it's in my neighborhood. I really appreciate that you guys talked. In fact, all your volunteer hours, all the volunteer hours were able to, to generate, but I really helped us out there. So thanks again, everybody, for that. Um, mm -hmm. Especially Mindy. <laughs> um, we do, Mindy, did you want to talk about 3B on our agenda? So, Grandview Rotary Park is the playground is open. Um, the new playground is in and it's being used. The bathrooms will be finished mid April, mid, mid August, August, excuse yes. me. You can make it mid August and then the parking lot. Some of it might be finished beginning of July. 
Um, we would like to have a park grant opening celebration, and we just will need to decide when to do that. Do we wait for all things to be finished, parking lot and restrooms? Do we choose a time that we really like? the end of the summer, beginning of the school year. So I will be actively looking for any individuals who would like to be part of a one-time committee that is to plan this park grand opening celebration. So if you have any interest in being part of this one-time committee, please reach out to me. And if you are on Zoom, you can make a comment and Rachel will note who you are. And I'll just mention that we, um, I was responsible for, or I took the responsibility for making purchases for the community building funds that each neighborhood district um, is allowed to use each fiscal year. And to, today was the deadline for the use of funds. We have only left a little less than a dollar fifty on the table. We have purchased great signage and a few um, non-perishable snacks and paper goods for our future projects. Thanks. Thanks for um, taking a hold on that. Um, we have item C on our agenda here. Um, Mel Smith wanted to talk to a little bit about um, about item C. So Minty mentioned we have as our as a neighborhood district, we have a budget of a thousand dollars a year that we can spend on um, events, uh, basically. And we were able to find things to spend on this year, but we. We'd like to figure out what we want to kind of things we want to spend it on in the future because we're not going to need a whole bunch of signs every year. And we've got all our snacks and non perishable stuff. <laughs> However, long we have it for um, it's kind of a strange amount because, you know, our district, I, I'm pretty sensitive to the fact that we don't just want this to be like a grand new district. So if we want, it's hard to throw a party that covers the whole district for a thousand dollars, for example, because there's I heard Rachel saying there's 35,000 people that live in our district. Area. Four has the largest population of all the districts 35,000. Is that, so, that students? And probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, did you, did you want to come talk a little bit? About... Uh, yeah, let me just. So the fiscal year ends June 30th, right? So we have so we can start thinking about this thousand dollars and how to spend it for the, the next year starting July 1. So in our executive board meeting, we discussed some options. We just wanted to get there's a few more of you here. We just wanted to get some ideas from the group as to what might be beneficial, uh, what might be fun, what might be okay. And so if you have any ideas about what we could do, that would be great. I think that District 1, did you say, Rachel, had block parties? Uh, yeah, District 5, and the Mazer neighborhood, does a block party That's every year. Exactly sure how to divide up the money that way, um, but other options that we talked about were a pool party, maybe looking at a, a movie that could a party that, that you know could be held in a big enough park that a lot of people might come to. Uh, and the whole idea is to promote the connection between neighborhoods and between neighborhoods in the district and so forth. So do any of you who have who aren't on executive committee <laughs> have any ideas about what we might be able to or want to do. And is there anything from Zoom, if we get anything from Zoom too, well, that would be helpful. Uh, but if, if so, I'll just ask, does anybody have any additional comments about this? Please. Well, I am not anywhere near Grandview. I'm as far away from Grandview as you can go. 
in Pleasant View. However, I think the grand opening of the Rotary Park could really be a big bash for the whole entire district. So that's a possibility. Another one that strikes my fancy is getting the Provo Rec Center. I know that they have times that they close it for who knows what, maybe it could be our activity and we could, you know, have swimming and food and pool, meaning the pool table, not just the swimming pool. Anyway, whatever, at, at the rec center. So those are my two ideas. I'm really big on brainstorming. I'm not really great on following through and doing the work. <laughs> well, I'm not really a party guy either, but um, I'm more than happy to help out. Yeah, the, I think, as I recall, the uh, Provo City charges $200 to rent the pool. It's $500. Uh, oh, sorry, $500. And then potentially another, I think it's $2 a person, which can be negotiated. Uh, but again, that would only allow for. I think they have a max of 2000 Yeah, so, so you can accommodate the whole district. Uh, but if there was a shindig there in that park, uh, there's a lot of things that people could do there as well. So that's one. Thing. Because the grand opening, and then we can have a movie. Yeah. So the, the idea is you're talking about the grand opening of Rotary Park, right? The grand opening of a movie night at the spot. Okay. Any other comments, Ken? Uh, this this would not be a separate activity, um, but um, I'm all in favor of having fun. But if we want to encourage not just uh camaraderie within the district but more public engagement i wonder if at whatever event we have which i'm guessing would be this summer maybe or, maybe, or next summer well if it's, this, if it's this summer and it's like the rotary or maybe we just do this as part of the rotary park opening event is uh encourage people to register to vote and, and maybe have people going around registering people to vote. Um, people in our district may be less engaged than usual because unfortunately the incumbent is running on the vote. Um, but there is a citywide race that we can all vote in. And if we want more people to engage in the district, you know, what we're doing here tonight, um, one step toward that might be getting them to actually register to vote. And, Pay attention to some of the issues. Um, I, I I don't know. About, I don't think it. Rachel may even comment on this. The using a thousand a thousand dollars for that kind of activity is that would that be okay or is that engaging too much in a political? I mean, kind as of long thing? as you're not saying okay. vote for this person, if it's purely just registering people to vote, and that's it, because we had the same question about um other things that we we do like like we have a booth at the farmers market and we were asking so you can register people to vote you just can't have any signs for any candidates you can't really discuss any candidates it's purely just registering people to vote just one thought i heard it uh actually it was a district one it, everybody wants to have a party or get together but like Aaron who brought up, you know, you could make, encourage people to vote or register, but they, they had one of just, let's have a table, let's have some people there to try to get people to come to these meetings or to know what's happening in them, so that the goal is not just to have a party, but it's to raise some awareness and maybe get a little more participation in what we're doing here. That's a good idea. So, uh, no. do we, oh, right there. I don't have anything particularly in mind, but I do find that um, you know, parties are fun and great, but sometimes if you can have service opportunities, maybe within the neighborhoods even, um, to then invite people to come out and say, hey, we're trying to accomplish this or that, um, that can be another great way to get people more involved and aware of needs and ways that they can participate, but also get the opportunity to meet other people that are more involved. Thanks. Any other comments? Do we do we need to we don't need to necessarily take a vote on this, do we? No, I don't think so. Um, 
I think uh, I, because this year we started the council program and this new program in January, we've kind of been like sprinting through a year. So I think I'd be more willing to wait a little bit till we have a good plan because we're not trying to rush the whole year to set the mission over months and, and give it a little bit. Um, I think I think the park opening is a great thing and we want to spend some money to support that and, and encourage people to turn out anyway, that'd be great. But uh, I wouldn't want to commit like all our budget for the next year to the one thing when we, we might need some in the future. It's like a large amount. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just my thoughts. Uh, when when's the park opening at? Or when's the date? So end of summer at the earliest. Okay. If we're we're, if we're waiting on the bathroom and the parking lot to be finished. Do we have a timeline? And so August August tenth is the possible date that the bathrooms could be finished. And then they close on September 10th. <laughs> oh, when, <laughs> I need they might need to find out when, when they will get locked. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. It, it, they, they close them for the winter. I don't know if they call the winter, but okay. That's so that. so okay. sometime in like mid-August at the earliest point. So I think we'll have another meeting where then yeah. we can work out some more details and then vote if we want to or specific funds we want to spend on that. Um, just a question about that. About the park. On the north side of the new parking lot that's going in, there's several big trees that they removed. We do not know that. Yeah, they took all those out. I wonder. Well, I'm very well aware. And like, sadly, I don't have any information. We don't know if they're going to put new ones back in or anything. So, yeah, you won't have the same <laughs> I have a predictable punch. Bike, bike rack. I think it's called a bike rack. Uh, oh, uh, the, 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 park, the parking lot is dirt. Yeah, so it's so it's not, not. By, by the by the court, by the playground. No. Oh, I don't know that it's that developed yet. No, I mean, I mean, around the pickleball court. So yeah. there's there is seating oh, and yeah. in the there's no in room between, but I don't. I don't see room for a bike rack right there. There may be some on the side. So maybe are, are, you are, are you our point person? Well, I'm in the north neighborhood, which is where that is, but um, I could definitely try to find out that out. Uh, I find with projects of the city that bicycle parking is an afterthought. Okay. And then they are they are scrambling to figure out where to put it. I I've already raised this issue. Okay. So they okay, have great. talked about it and um, it would be nice to get you know, with somebody from somebody other than me. Roger will use his name. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Say, Aaron told me. So, everybody, come with your ideas. Um, um, I think we're, we're open to how to spend the money we have, uh, both for the uh, the events or the outreach money we have, and for the possibility of matching grant stuff in the future. So, if anybody in the room or online or whoever, uh, we I think we'd love to hear some. some yeah. yeah, I I like to bring up the idea that we will maybe want some of this money for something next year, and then it occurs to me that this is called Rotary Park. Does anyone here know people in Rotary Club that might help make a donation for the grand opening that we, that would give us some more money to use for that and then save some of our other money for something next summer? Not all of it, but some of it. Anybody? The, the, the Rotary some? Park is still active and global, unlike some of these other ones. Yes, Rotary Club meets every something, every Wednesday or whatever at the, the golf. Riverside Golf Club. Yeah. I think that would be a great idea to involve them. We're, so we're reopening their park. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, and their name, if they want their name still on it. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Yeah. Does anybody know anybody at Rotary Club? There's, oh, there's, there's a lot of major people that get money. 
Don Jarvis is the city's sustainability okay. advisor. He's he's involved in the okay. water I don't know. Okay. What uh, well, I drive by that every day. What does the rock say? The, the, brand new rotary park. Brand new rotary park, right? Yes. 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 I can explain how that happened. <laughs> well, let's have a big party then. <laughs> Holding on what we can. Um, let's let's have a quick. Does anybody else have a time for his public comments? Is there anybody else? I think we have some online. Yes, we have some online. So Susan Anderson is saying perhaps door prizes or snacks at our at our meetings would encourage more people to come to them i told her she was missing out that we had lots of snacks and she said that's great what about a couple of gift cards to some place like brick oven she suggested and also we have travis hoban our um, city councilor he is on and he wants to make a comment travis Hey everybody, can you hear me all right? Yes, yeah. All right. Uh, well, I just wanted to say thank you all for the work you did on the matched grant. And also I wanted to make sure and let you know that I'll be um, involved in trying to keep the uh, Carterville Path um, opportunity going there. So I'll be working with Rachel and council staff on that and city staff. And then um, I just wanted to make a kind of a high level comment that I really love what this district represents as far as you have various interests from different neighborhoods coming together. I love the idea that people in Grandview are focused on sidewalks in North Park and a trail in Carterville and, you know, Carterville. It just, I just love the idea that everyone is working together to try to advance um, the interests of other neighborhoods. I just think it's something really neat that we have going on with this district program. And I don't see, I only see one other district, you know, District 5, because they're, they're Dixon and they're in my, my district. But um, I hope that we're seeing some of these same successes, Rachel, in other districts. And I, I think that we can really look to District 4 as an example of, of how this district program is supposed to, supposed to work. So I just want to say thank you all to, to you all um, for, for what you're doing in our district. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, how many people are have we had online? So currently we have we have about six, but I think we had about twenty during the temple presentation. We're online. Okay. And I'm sure we'll get some more views on that as we get its out. Right. Okay. That's great. Uh, does anybody have anything else they want to talk about? I had a question. How did, did you guys have the in Grandview, your sidewalk opening or your new sidewalks? Yeah. Yes. So Sunday, June 25th, the Grandview, specifically south, because the resurfaced streets and the new sidewalk ramps are all in Grandview South neighborhood. So we are hosting a neighborhood stroll starting at 6.30, Sunday, June 25th. You don't have to be there at 6.30. That's just when the cookies and the water will be set out. And we are encouraging um, pedestrians and bicyclists and trikes and strollers to go up and down 1750 West and then across. There's two or three streets that you could go across and then do um, the lower half of 1500 West to enjoy our new sidewalk ramps, which we are thrilled with. Great. Uh, last call for any other public comments. Uh, I just want to say thanks for putting the notification about this meeting out in in public where we happened to bump into it this morning. Uh, posting on Facebook doesn't do us any good. That's why what we should have bought a bunch of signs. What's what sign? Sign? Thank you. What sign did you see, Roger? On seven thirty. Yeah. Yeah, the roundabout. The roundabout of 70. And then we also, yeah, we might also buy it on down closer to Columbia. So, yeah. Great, thanks. Uh, hopefully, our signs will help get the word out even more in the future. Okay, I think that's all. Thanks for everyone for showing up today for, for this. Uh, so, have a good night. Awesome.
Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. I'm